What is happening? Welcome to another picture video break time. My name is Nick Pollock, and today, oh yeah, it's James Paxson. Okay, so I love James Paxson. If you guys don't know me and James Paxson, since I think the very beginning of Pitcher Gifts days, I've been obsessed with Paxson after like a small blip at the end of the year in 2014, and I wrote a gift breakdown to bring back Pitcher List in 2015 uh, about Paxson and his potential. And I remember distinctly about 2016, 2017, I think it was, um, probably 16, where he all of a sudden started throwing harder and with a cutter and since then it's been this weird tumultuous time of injuries and everything and we hadn't seen him for years and all of a sudden bam here he is so he's had this amazing stretch however being a little bit slower to 94 or so and there's 93 and he allows a hit and i want to watch this game against the astros because yeah i want to see him dominating with fastballs inside the zone so that's what he's trying to do early on. He's just trying to get comfortable at fastball, 93, 94. They, there's the curveball that he throws to. In that, when he threw the no-hitter against the Jays, he was throwing 99, 100-mile-per-hour pitches like that, right? Inside corner to lefties. And this is essentially my favorite skill. Anytime uh, people ask me, Nick, they're like, Nick, what is... They're like... People ask me, Nick, what is your favorite skill to see as a lefty? It is this. That's a fastball painted up and in to a right-hander with a four-seamer. There is no better skill that I want to see from a left-hander than this ability. <clears throat> That's it. It's not good. Uh, now he tries to go back there. He doesn't hit it. It's really hard to do it. Uh, at 3-1, you know that Bregman's looking for a fastball. So, like, if you can put a curveball in here, this is this is the real fun stuff. But now he tries to actually go with a changeup, it looks like. Or no, no, and fastball. He misses down. Oh, boy. I. Uh, Ah, there's the curveball, and he's using that against the lefty. As you can see so far, he's just really struggling with his command early here, right? He has a 3 nothing lead, and he just can't take advantage of it. But he's going so much with the heater, and I don't necessarily disagree with it, but what you want to be seeing with Paxson is generally supposed to be all over here, and he's missing down, he's missing here. He's not in any sort of groove right now with that fastball. And he's missing again, and that even has some sink to it almost. It's kind of strange. And again, just cannot locate the fastball. There you go, much better. And what's kind of interesting is he's missing low. And when you miss low with your fastball, it essentially means that your, your back leg isn't pushing out enough. It, it essentially, it's just that you're getting too far out with your timing and your release with your arm, which is rarer than the opposite, which is that your arm is tired and lagging behind. So when it's out in front too much, it generally means that you're not striding far enough. If it's too short of a stride. And then all of a sudden, you're not, uh, you're essentially not doing enough with your lower half. So to see here in 95 is pretty much, I would think, if I'm the catcher, I'm like, hey, focus on that back leg, right? To really push out and extend so that you are able to get that timing back. And that's a really good one at, at 95 upstairs to Kyle Tucker. I would throw the cutter if I had it. Um, this is an absolute cutter count, especially a 3 1 where he hasn't really seen anything else and just throw a cutter with a 3 2 pitch is just so gutsy. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to see it though. Now we're not. There's 95. This is wh what happens to this one. Let's push to the left side. Is it a home run? I'll look at the reaction. He's upset. Okay. Makes the catch look good. Wait, how is there a man on here? What's going on? Right. Why are bases juice? Oh, did they walk automatic walk? Catcher's interference in the next play. Oh boy. Oh, it's catcher's interference on that one. Oh man. So so he throws a first pitch curveball, which is expected. Base is loaded, right? Uh base is loaded. I uh, big boy up, you throw a curveball. It's just every single big boy is gonna go after a fastball even you're done. And where do you know he gets a fastball at 95 here? 1 0. Sends it to left field and it's caught. So Cutters are what you normally do here. Why do you normally cutters like this? Because if you throw a fastball there to a big boy like that, he's trying to get lift. He's just trying to send to the outfield, and this is a run, right? If you're able to do a cutter there, maybe you can get something on the ground at least. Ah, and there's a curveball, and that at least didn't let him get enough lift, right? Obviously, this should have been at least a double play, if not a single out. Um, at least an out, if not a double play, I should say. Um, but the curveball makes it so it's more on the ground here. Let's watch this one more time. And 
Ah, right. Like instead of throwing the fastball, so doesn't get lucky there. Okay, comes back fastball. That's a good one. See, that's the pitch that I really want to see from Paxton more often. Um, it's in the upper half, ninety-five, and guys just generally don't do well when he does that. They struggle on that pitch from Paxton. Again, ninety-six, and you can even see some tailing action there. And to see him swinging out of his shoes on that one. It's so in his head right now that you he will be crippled with a cutter right now because he's so anxious now to hit the fastball. But you can go out farther up if you want to. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, both philosophies are fine. Either A, show me that you can beat me on this thing, which you haven't yet, or B, just get a little extra cute and do that. Now, oftentimes with batters that they continuously see the same thing, they'll eventually get better at it like it is fouling this one off, which kind of shows like, okay, probably the cutter would have been in the thing. But he hasn't thrown a cutter yet. I haven't seen it. Ah, there's a curveball. So he trusts the curveball more than the cutter right now. Why? I don't know. I think Paxton's cutter is actually still really good this year. So um, I'm actually a little weirded out by the fact that he's not turning to it at all. Great pitch there, though. That's That was in the dirt ultimately, but it was under the zone, right? Not like actually bounced. It crossed the plate like under the zone, not on the plate, which is why you get the whiff there. And well, you know, lefty going, trying to go inside, leaves it out of the middle. It's still inside enough. Um, but you get farther inside now. Make the adjustment. Ah, he tries to go. No, I think that's the curveball again. He hits the ground to make it look like it's something else. Yeah. Ah, now we're up to 97. Here we go. Remember it was 94 when he last did that? Now it was 97. Okay. Now, now we're getting some good Paxton. One, two, throw a cutter here, please. I mean, that's a really good fastball up in 97. But the fact that he gets to it, right? It's like, oh, man. 97, 83, fine. I need that 88, that 91 cutter. That's supposed to go right here. Where is it? That's a curveball. I need the cutter. That's a change up. Just a heads up. Um, I remember actually being in a uh, watching, doing a watch party. I think it was Cole Reagan's uh, watch party. Could be someone else. Where... Um, no, it was Emerson Hancock watch party on playback.tv slash pitch. And by the way, if you're not there, we watch baseball together. It's free. 100% free. It's like Twitch, but for live sports. Yeah. What are you doing? Just sign up. You'll get any notifications if we're doing a watch party and watching baseball together. So you don't do it alone. It's great. We talked about this kind of play where when there's a grounder to the shortstop like this, right? The shortstop can make a play on it. So can the third baseman. What is supposed to happen here? What's always supposed to happen is, is always the third base's ball, third baseman's ball. But no, the shortstop is the best defender. Yes, but look at the direction that the third baseman is going. He's going toward first base. The shortstop would have to come at this and then make it a, a throw in a different direction. This is why always, if this third baseman can get it, he always calls us off and gets it. And watch, that's what Devers does. Right, and he gets the out, right? That's how it's supposed to be done. I've seen some confusion on that. There was a play with J.P. Crawford getting hit um, by Suarez, where Suarez had it. And I think Suarez just wasn't loud enough that he could get it. But everyone was like, oh, man, that's Crawford's ball. What is Suarez doing? No, that if Suarez can get it as a third baseman, that's his. Uh, all right. So, so here we are, second inning now. Because I'm probably this is going to be the last one I can do. I uh, guess a fastball inside. Oh, man. Verdugo, if you can get that, which it looked like you could, you got to step up and call and get this. This is the right fielder's ball all the way through. Oh, he stopped because the guy was there. You know, you got to call him off sooner. Change up. Again, no cutter. I've not seen a cutter yet. Fastball inside is beautiful. I mean, that's way better. Should have just thrown that pitch one. He showed the hand with the change up. Uh, I think maybe that was trend. No, that was a curve at 85. Man, where is this cutter? 80, no. Ah, uh, maybe that was it at 85. Maybe it is 85 is the cutter. 80 versus 85. Okay. I mean, I'm used to seeing the cutter more at 90 from Paxton. Um, Fastball now, right? Yeah. Only at 94. What? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be joking. This is ball four. This is ball four. How does Maldonado hit this? 172 average. Like, what is going on here? 
Look where this bitch is. What? I mean, that's a, that's the definition of dropping the barrel. Being like not seeing it, thinking it's over the plane, and realizing it's not, and just kind of like dropping the barrel and good things happening. It's, it's why generally we're like, hey, don't throw it low. This up here is ball four. This is gives them an opportunity, I guess. I mean, wow, that's so unlucky. You never see that. I mean, sure, it, like it's a higher chance. I'm saying because it's lower, that means the barrel can get to it as opposed to higher up there. But wow, okay. There's the there's the cutter inside and stop. it's foul. Um, yeah, that it, it's too loopy of a cutter. It's not the harder 90 91 cutter I'm used to from Paxson. I don't like that. Wow, look how inside he is right now. He is really pushing him. I mean, that is insane. I've, I I don't think I've seen that for ages. Like that is truly like set up inside. You know, and I think that's because the cutter was already inside and he's cheating on that. He wants to cheat him even more, like push him off. Because that's where Paxton lives. I need to throw changeups away. Yeah. That, I understand this completely. Change up away again. Oh, a curve, man. He's so aggressive on it. I would do a change up away. I would not give anything inside. Yeah. Oh man. That was that was yeah, okay. I mean, this was a really good spot. The reason I'm like this is because, man, if he misses this, Altubi sets it out. Like this is this is a really good pitch. Like amazing pitch it's a risky one because if this misses anywhere a little bit lower like even at like the top of the zone like this like here i think that altuve gets it just because of how much he's been selling out here which is why i wanted the change up there um and there's a fastball 95 i mean that's not a good fastball this has got to be higher up um to break uh to bregman like that's just you can't do that mistake um there's a fastball inside. That's good. I'm cool with this. This is like, if you get a swing on this, generally you get either the double play ball or uh, an out or something. I mean, that's unfortunate. Try and do the curve. Can't do it. There's the curve. You got a strike. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I mean, this is just not a good fastball, right? This is, this is right down the middle. Ugh, gosh. You gotta get that inside the Alvarez. Absolutely. He's trying to do the cutter. He can't do it. Yeah, the cutter is just completely gone from him. At this point, I know it gets better, by the way. The other innings are better than these from Paxton. Here's the cutter, finally. 86, he gets it. Um, 95, and he, he's trying to go away, and he gets him up and in on it. And that means he really just set up the changeup away. Or a curveball or something. Yeah. Goes with the curve. I would do a changeup away. Because he's so he's selling out for the fastball at this point. You can tell by the way he's swinging. I mean, he still can't. Yeah, but that's a really good fastball up, right? 95. So last batter here we're going to focus on. Gets it inside at 94. Beautiful 95 up there. And because he's swinging on this stuff, you got to go breaking ball of some kind. Yeah, grounder, you get the out. Okay. So I uh, so James Paxson, I think it commit was a big thing here. The cutter is not working as well as it should. He's not getting the curveball for strikes. Yeah, too much focus on the fastball and he made mistakes because that's going to happen with it. But you do see those good pitches that do get those outs. And the Astros did punish him in ways that he shouldn't have been punished and sometimes he should. But yeah, Paxton, I think, is actually okay. It's just the command needs to get a little bit better, right? Um, but he's not so far removed from it as it would seem. And also, he does do better in the, the final uh, three innings here. All right, but that is it for today. Make sure you comment about who you want me to, to talk about next. But that is it. So my name is Nick Pollock. Comment your battles below. And your strikeout time.